Uh, hi, Shane. Uh, I would just like to know, tomorrow, uh, the game against Oman, you're on the verge of, uh, you know, topping the group and, you know, qualifying for the Super, Super 12 stage. So how huge would this be for Scottish cricket? I mean, uh, you know, progressing to the Super 12 stage of the T20 World Cup. The significance of this. Yeah, well, the magnitude of the game is, is massive in terms of the bigger picture, not only of Scottish cricket, but just associate cricket, really, I think. Um, I think there's been many associates that are going to show in this World Cup that they, they're closing the gap. And um, the brand of cricket that's on show is, is an exciting brand of cricket for the world to see, um, not only from us. Um, for, but in terms of us, we, we know what's on the line. Um, all the players know what's on the line. We've, we've prepared for it, we've spoken about it. And um, if there's any team that understands um, that there's a must-win game, it's probably going to be a team like Scotland that often goes into competitions knowing that every game is a must-win game. Uh, we, we spoke about topping the group. That was certainly a goal and, a, and a, something we wanted to achieve before we arrived here. Um, we spoke about it, we've planned for it, um, and it wouldn't surprise me if we did do that because the mindset is there and the belief is there amongst the group and the unit. So, um, so it's huge in terms of Scottish cricket. It also it has the ability to inspire a nation and, and to be the first Scottish team to go and create history and, and do something that we've never done before is, is certainly on the, the back of every, every player and support staff's mind, I'm pretty sure. So. You know, to leave a legacy of being the first Scottish team to do that is, is certainly a motivation of ours. Um, and to inspire all those young, young cricketers, not only in Scotland, but around the world, to take up the game and, and you know, play a brand of cricket that, that's, that Scotland plays is, is ultimately the goal we, we want to be achieving. Right. And uh, coming into the tournament, I think, uh, what was the kind of preparation that uh, went into... Uh, you know, uh, into a tournament like this, and you know, obviously playing against a team like Bangladesh, uh, which is uh, you know a far more experienced and established uh, outfit. Did you actually see uh, you know a win like that uh, coming your way? Did it, uh, was there a great deal of self belief in the team that this could be done, and you know you could be in a stage like this where you could top the group? Did that was there that sort of thinking in the squad? Yeah, the thinking is, has been there even before I arrived. Uh, with this unit, uh, there was a belief that we could that we could beat um, full member nations. It, it's happened previously, where the team has beaten the likes of England and Sri Lanka and Bangladesh on a previous occasion. You obviously need the opportunities to do that. You you need the platform to to deliver those performances, which we have on this stage. Uh, in terms of preparation, uh, it wasn't. It certainly wasn't the last six months. It's been probably the last 18 to 24 months that we've been speaking about it and planning and, and what the pandemic gave us as a unit was the opportunity to go away and, and work on various skills and you know and tactics that we knew that would be required in this World Cup. Uh, previously, previously it was going to be in India so you start thinking about what the conditions might be like in India and then when it shifts over to the UAE you, you then have an opportunity to be really confident because this is uh, conditions that we've faced in recent times and we've been very successful over here. So that, that did add to the motivation and, and to, the, to the thinking. But um, in terms of preparation, we've, the, the lads have worked nonstop for, for 18 months, whether that be at home, sitting at home, waiting for this pandemic to go past, focusing on the things they can really control during that time, and working on the mentality of getting into big tournaments and, and having to win every single game. So we've had really good preparation in Scotland, um, even though there probably was a frustration that there was no cricket. Uh, for a long period of time. So when cricket does come, it's, it's one of those where you've got to really respect it um, and appreciate it and, and go out and, and once again send a message to the rest of the world that, that we've got some really good players within this group. We've got a unit that, that can go out and do special things and it's something that we truly believe um, we can still achieve in this tournament. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, a bit of a uh, carry forward on that question. Uh, we noticed there was that something extra on the field that you all gave, especially in the match against Bangladesh. So uh, is, is the fact that you all spend a lot more time, perhaps fewer of you are playing in the T20 franchise leagues as compared to some of the other countries, is that something that may have gone in your favor in this particular tournament? 
I think it's always important that, that players get the opportunity to play in various competitions and test themselves, not only against the world's best players, but, but get involved in different systems, experience different coaches, different styles of playing, different conditions. I think it's really important that we keep pushing players to go out and do that. And, and the world of cricket now offers the opportunity for many different competitions for players to go out and do that. We, we've had a few players that have, that have been involved in various competitions, not, not a lot within the last 24 months. We've, you know, a few obvious reasons through to the pandemic and everything else. But um, I'm always a fan of the players going out and experiencing different environments. We do spend a lot of time together in Scotland. We're, um, the, the team is as close as they are. It's not surprising to know that they, they get on really well. It's because we spend a lot of time together and they enjoy each other's company. And um, the biggest thing is they actually enjoy each other's successes. That's, that's probably the highlight for me of, of, of what's happened in this competition. You can see a real togetherness and a belief, and that stems from not only training and the environment and the behaviours, but, but um, also the culture that we've tried to breed within Scottish cricket. And um, I've no doubt that our younger generation will be looking at that and they want to achieve even more, more than what this group has achieved. And that's, that's the legacy we want to leave, not only in this tournament, but moving forward. And how much do you benefit from uh, UK cricket and their league? You know, the English league, basically. Yeah, we have a few players that play in the county set up. Uh, we, we have a few of our younger players that also are involved in the setup, and we really do value that, that time that the players get to spend within those counties. Um, it does mean that they get to play a lot of cricket, which is really important. One of the things we are striving for in Scotland is to, to be able to give the players more cricket, uh, more quality cricket, uh, keep building our domestic structures and our, and our youth pathways, and make sure that they are as competitive and, um, and challenging as they can be so that the next crop of Scottish cricketer coming through can not only get onto the world stage and compete, but actually perform at their best. That's, that's the ultimate plan. So um, we do have a few that are involved in, in, in the counties, Brad Wills at Hampshire, Josh Davies at Somerset, um, and that's just to name a couple uh, that play pretty regularly for their counties. Would we like more? Absolutely. Uh, would we like to keep developing our own domestic structures so we don't have to rely on the counties? Absolutely. Um, but I think there's a fine balance when it comes to that. Um, again, this is something I asked earlier to the uh, uh, PNG captain, uh, but Oman and uh, Scotland and PNG have basically risen through the ranks together. Um, what are your comments on Oman cricket and its facilities over here? Well, you only need to look around and see the fantastic atmosphere and the drone images of what's being created here in, in Oman. I think it's absolutely magnificent for for Armani Cricket and uh, what they've created and developed here within a very short space of time is, is, is absolutely fantastic for the, for the game. Uh, the Armani team has for a very prolonged period of time now played good cricket. Um, whenever we come up against them it's competitive games and they are hard fought matches. It's never over until the final ball against them. They, they fight hard all the way through. They're, uh, they're a very competitive bunch and I have no doubt that tomorrow is going to be no, no different. Um, you know, PNG the same. They, they're, a, they're a group that's been together for a long period of time. They've had a particularly tough trip. They've, um, they've lost loved ones during this period, and for them still to be together and fighting the way that they did yesterday against us is, 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 you know, is fantastic to see, and they're just a great bunch of lads who, who should be very proud of themselves. Their spirit is, is really there to be admired, their fielding, and, and the way they go about their business is, is fantastic. So. We have huge respect for those teams, huge admiration for what they've achieved. But when we get on the park tomorrow, it's going to be a huge battle that we're looking forward to. So looking ahead beyond tomorrow itself, now that uh, you know, it's, quite, um, it, it's quite probable that you'll make it to the next round, any preferences which group you would like to be with? Well, you say it's probable. Well, we know we need to win tomorrow. Um, that's, that's for sure. And, and even coming into this tournament, we, we wanted to win three games, as I mentioned previously. Um, I've, I've been very reluctant to look too far ahead. Uh, I'm really trying to urge the, the units and the squad to remain very much within the present. Um, all we can focus on right now is, is recovering and resting up today and making sure that we bring our best performance tomorrow. We know we're going to probably need to bring our best performance tomorrow against the Saman team um, who had a, a tough game against Bangladesh last night and they probably had several opportunities to win that match. So we know they're dangerous, and, um, and all we can do is focus on tomorrow's performance. And if we follow, stick to our processes, our routines, 
and keep winning those big moments, which we've done um, so far in this tournament, then, then we know we can progress. And whichever group you get, I don't think people can be um, too worried about that right now. We'll, we'll worry about that when we get there. Hi, Shane. Um, I just want to understand, you mentioned the um, closing, closing the gap from the associate members to the full members. Um, how much do you think the EU performances are representing not only Scotland, but the growth of associate cricket? I get quite a few messages from other coaches from associate nations, and uh, we're a very tight-knit unit, the associates. That doesn't mean it's us v them. It's just very much a, a network of, of teams that are looking to progress their game within their own countries. Um, we're very supportive of all those teams. Uh, but when we come up against one another, they, they're huge battles, and more often than not, they go down to the last over and the last ball because of the nature of those, those battles and the competitiveness. Um, is it a level playing field? It certainly isn't. Uh, you know, you've got to work on shoestring budgets. You know, resources are very limited. Facilities are challenging at times. But, you know, my job as a coach is to make sure that we go over and beyond and, and reach uh, targets that we might have never been able to reach previously or or reach you know, various things that maybe players thought they couldn't reach. So, so that's our job as coaches, uh, never mind the fact that the resources and stuff is limited. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're guys that paid far more than I do to make those decisions and make sure that the game is spread around the world, uh, which is ultimately the goal of, of, of the ICC. And um, we're just fortunate that we're in a position now where we can be in a competition like this, experience the pressure, experience the the rugged nature of competition sport and be able to show the rest of the world what we're about. And I'm sure the other associate nations are doing that too. Today's going to be some interesting battles in that other group, I have no doubt. And, um, and we're very supportive of them, but, um, but very competitive when we get into battle. Great. Any further questions from here? Um, just one from me before we move to Zoom. Um, How's the reaction been back at home within the Scottish cricketing community and outside of it? Yeah, the support has been nothing short of incredible. Um, the messages you get from people, people you maybe haven't heard from in years, um, is, is wonderful. It's, it's amazing the ability sport has to pull a nation together and be able to allow people to dream. You know, something I mentioned to this group is we're allowed to dream, we're allowed to go out and do unrealistic things. And, um, and that's something we, we're looking to continue to do as a group and a unit. Uh, the support from, um, from Scotland, the fans, the families has been phenomenal. Uh, and not just Scotland, people from all around the world. So I have no doubt that we would have picked up a few more fans during this time and um, long may that continue. And ultimately it's about that next generation, that young, that young person who, boy or girl, who wants to put on a Scotland shirt and play, play for Scotland. Great, thank you. Um, if we now move over to Zoom, um, Rory, please unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, <clears throat> Hi Shane, thanks. Uh, just a, a question on Kyle, really. Uh, he, hasn't, he hasn't quite fired yet with the bat, but I just wonder if you could tell us a bit, really, about what he means to Scottish cricket as a front man and a leader. Obviously, very, very experienced, and he's... Um, I guess nothing would make him prouder than to, to come to the party at this, in this big game with so much on the line. Yeah, Carl, Carl has um, not put in the sort of performances he certainly would pride himself on. He's been, a, he's been a consistent performer for this team for many years. And actually, Carl, Carl is the, not only the leader in the team, but probably the person to thank in the way that the brand of cricket has changed within Scottish cricket. Um, the way that he's played, the, the braveness that he's shown in the last... 36 months in terms of how he wants to play has certainly resonated within the team. Um, I have no doubt that Kyle um, is only one day away or one performance away from, from really nailing his form. I've never seen a batter hit the ball so well in the nets in all my life. Um, he's, he's in the form of his life in terms of the nets. He's just got to take that out into the match. And what Kyle brings is not only performances within the team, but as a leader, he's an inspiring leader. He's a sense of calm. And I think or well, I know tactically within the last two games, he's, he's got a lot right. And um, you can certainly see that the players are, are following him and, and they believe in, in what he wants to do within this team. Uh, I have an incredible relationship with him. He's a fantastic human being. And I can't think of anyone else that deserves success more than him. Thank you. 
Uh, Chris, please ask your question. Yeah, I was going to ask about Kyle again, but Rory covered that, so I'll uh, go to a different tack, uh, Shane. Um, you're standing on the edge of history in terms of Scottish cricket here. There's not overconfidence, but how satisfying has it been? You talked about that kind of, it's not just six months, but this this journey since you came in to, to knit the belief of these disparate cricketers together that they can represent Scotland at the very top level. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fantastic place to be. I think we'd rather be where we are now than in any other place. Um, if you're not looking forward to competition sports as we are right now and sitting in the position we're in, then I think you're in, in the wrong position or you're in the wrong game, really. This is, this is competition sports. It's high pressure. There's high expectations. There's, there's a nation's hope, hopes uh, resting on, on the game tomorrow, and we, we know what that all represents. Um, we've, we've already created history in this tournament by winning two games. That's more than any Scottish team has done previously, but you know, we, we want to go one step further, and, 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 and all the goals that we've set have been over and beyond this group stage. Uh, we've spoken a lot about getting into round two and, and, and what we want to achieve within round two. But we know we need to take it one step at a time, and I'm just incredibly proud of, of the calm that this unit has shown. Um, the ability to win really big moments has been key. Um, and actually, we've, we've actually done that, not really getting out of third gear yet. You know, I don't think we've put a full game of cricket together yet. We've, we've shown glimpses. We've shown glimpses with a bat, glimpses with a ball, glimpses in the field. But we're going to have to bring all of that out tomorrow and then go again. Um, the players are very well aware of that. Um, there, there's a real confidence that, is, that has brewed within the group over the last month. We've been here for a long period of time now. Um, the sunshine is brewing confidence and, um, and we certainly are looking forward to, to what tomorrow represents. And I know when I look along the names in this Zoom call from the Scottish media, we're cricket fans. We've been punching upwards in terms of trying to get more exposure for the game in this country. But you could, you could provide the biggest shot in the arm for that and for all of us who are desperate to get more cricket on TV in Scotland by getting through to that Super 12 stage. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a duty we have. Um, we're in control of that, and we, we're well aware of that. We've, we would love Scotland to grow within the country. I don't think many people realise how much cricket is played within Scotland. You know, you only need to walk around on a weekend and go and see how many people are playing within the clubs. Um, it's fantastic to see, and, um, and we need more and more people to keep taking us seriously and know that we, we, we want to be a top 10 nation. Um, that's certainly a goal we have too. It's uh, destinies in our hands to go out tomorrow and send another message. Uh, but um, ultimately, uh, we just appreciate the, the support of the fans that they have shown. I have no doubt that we've sent really strong messages already within this tournament. And uh, we just look forward to more support moving forward. We, you know, there's only certain things you can control in life. Um, we're trying to control as much as we can at the moment. We, we know that there's a real sense of belief within this unit. And, um, and everybody is so far playing to their potential, and uh, we have one more game to go before we reset and, and go again within round two. So um, inspiring a nation is certainly one of the things we speak about quite a bit. We have the ability to do that. Fantastic. Very best of luck for tomorrow. Let's get this done. Thank you very much. Uh, Jamie, go ahead. Hi. Um, when you're away for long periods of time, particularly in the in the age of, of COVID bubbles and you're in hotels for, for long periods of time, how do you kind of keep things fresh? How do you kind of keep boys entertained for, for long periods like that? Well, I don't really know if you can complain when you're in five-star hotels and you, um, you're experiencing the amazing weather that we're experiencing at the moment. Um, no, on a, on a, a, to, be, to be honest, it's, it, it can be tough. You know, these bubbles are are incredibly tough at times when, when, when players are away from their families and their friends. And you're very restricted to, to hotels. What we've done on this trip is we've made sure that we've allowed each and every single player to, to try experience an environment that they, they're comfortable and safe in. We've also been really big on the well-being of the players on this trip. We've, we've brought staff members with that have, that have taken care of the players throughout the trip. They've been absolutely fantastic and I can only Thank those staff members for taking a lot of pressure off myself and the rest of the, 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 the staffing. Uh, the players would be very appreciative of it. We're just really lucky that this group of players um, manage themselves really well. They, they understand what it means to be away on a trip. It's not their first World Cup for many of them. Uh, they know how to manage one another. They get on incredibly well as a group. I've never seen the team spirit so good, uh, whether that comes from winning games or whether that comes from just you know, being very comfortable in your environment. Um, 
could be a reason. So, um, so yes, it's been tough. We've been away from home for more than a month now. But if you want to compete at the highest level, you know, there are other teams that have been in tougher positions than us. And we just really appreciate and respect the environment we're currently in. And it's an absolute privilege to be here. Um, to experience the pressure that it brings is, is a real privilege. So we'll, we'll cherish these moments. And we're certainly looking to create more memories along the way. Thanks. Graham? Hi Shane, you okay? Hi Graham. Um, you kind of touched on earlier about the kind of the, the bigger picture. How far away do you think Scotland is from becoming a full member? Because it's been a goal for a few years now. Yeah, in many ways, the, the goalposts um, are not really there for us to to make that decision. I really feel that that comes at a time when you've earned it, and um, and I have no doubt that this team is 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 there or very near to doing that. Um, you know, full membership is just a tag, really. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't define a mindset or a or a behaviour within your team. Professionalism is an attitude, um, and we know that whether full membership comes or not, um, we'll continue to keep striving to get better every single day. We will continue to try to grow the network of Scottish cricket, um, and and we'll make sure that we leave it in a better place than we found it. That's for sure. Um, Full membership would be great just to just to grow the systems and really put put resources into into the required fields that they that they needed, um, and that's all it is really. Uh, but again, uh, that sort of destiny is within our hands. You can only control what you can, and by doing what we've done in this tournament so far, it's it's a platform for us to show people out there why why we are ready for it and. Um, and we have no doubt that, that if it came our way, we would, we would really reap the, reward, uh, the, the rewards from that. So um, it's something you can't think about too much. Uh, quite often these decisions are made um, you know, at various times. But um, destiny is in our hands to, to be able to achieve it. So we know that. Um, and when it comes, we'll be ready for it. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Gary. Okay, just a, a brief one, an update on, on Safian Sharif. Was he injured yesterday? Yes, yeah, Safian unfortunately had a tight groin. Um, we, 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 you know, we, we made the tough decision to, to leave him out and, and rest him. Uh, I just really uh, respect the honesty from, from the player and know that um, you know, there's the bigger picture that was, that was taken into consideration. Uh, with that also being said, we were 100% confident that Ali Evans could come in and and matched up pretty well against PNG. He's been in fantastic form for a long period of time now, and really unlucky to be missing out in this in this really quality bowling attack we have at the moment. So it was an opportunity for Ali to come in. He did a great job. Got a really important wicket yesterday, and um, and Saf will will sit up, well, he sat on the sides yesterday, but um, we'll we'll still make the decision as to what we do against Amman. So we're confident that all 15 players can come into this playing 11 and. And not only play, but you know, make an impact and be the man of the match. We we speak about that quite often. And the four guys that are missing out right now, although it's incredibly frustrating for them, I have no doubt they 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 also understand the bigger picture. So Saf was just one of those that we were just used a bit of um, a bit of uh, precaution yesterday, but he he will be ready to go and fit to play against Demond.